people would ban Vlad was because a lot of people would normally first pick it because it's very, very strong in the middle lane. Uh, as we've been saying, yes. Yeah. But uh, there's lots of other mid laners that are pretty strong. Azir still valued, even though he, yep. was, get, he was hit uh, with the nerf bat. Braum is actually banned away. So Wendelbo won't get his Braum. Um, it still has Karma. If yeah, apparently, he, it's if he pretty wants good. It. I mean, that, that game was that game. They just kind of went big all around. Yeah, that's fair. Everyone had big kill participation, but he was involved in everything. Uh, see if they're able to do that again. This time, Huma are going to ban the Rise themselves. They don't want to leave it up first pickable. So, is it junglers that are available? Do we see the Caitlyn still available? If Huma want to take that for themselves, we may be in a situation where. If Krizlin wants the Caitlyn, which typically hasn't been down his kind of avenue, Huma may even pass it over and go back for the Sive or the Ezreal is what we've seen a lot of, out of uh, Krizlin or Pinoy. Yeah, maybe Epsilon are banking on that. You know, they, they ban the Kindred away, but that's the first jungle ban we've had so far. If the Nidalee makes it through. Nidalee, you'd imagine, would be here as, uh, as a ban. Typically, that, that would be in this spot. I'm looking at what else is available. Um, of course, a lot of picks got kind of gutted in yeah, 6.11. So again, everybody's, everybody's still trying to, to we rework what the balance even have power is. Nami first pick on yeah. EU LCS 2 the other day, uh, which we were a little confused by. Ooh. Ah, um, huh. yeah. I would say that's a non-ban. Uh, no, I actually think that's probably a legitimate Twitch ban. We are seeing a little bit more in the way of Twitch come through. Uh, seen it a fair amount in LCK. Um, oh, we saw it as far back as MSI as well. Yeah, that's true. But it was often paired with the Kindred. I mean, this is a little bit different. This leaves the Nidalee open. Ban the rat, leave the cat. Yep. So Kire is going to get to pick it up. <laughs> yeah, going to get to pick it up. I wonder what Huma will look for here. Trundle would be available. It's Wendelbo's old uh, pick that he likes to get. And if they wanted to run some kind of uh, composition based off like Ezreal, Trundle tends to be fairly good when it comes to uh, slowing people and locking them down. But Huma have so many options available. Um, really depends on what route they want to go here because they showed us something a little different last time with, uh, or at least different to what they've showed before with the Aurelia, with the Rek'Sai, where it's all about the side lanes. Both could of which are still available thing. now. Aurelia is still up as well. Yeah. Aurelia Rek'Sai could actually be the first lock-in. Ah, and the Caitlyn is actually going to be the choice. So even though, you know, they've shot away from it in the past, mm -hmm. this time, Chrysland will get his hands on Caitlyn and they take Victor. Cadrill is the one who gets it this time. So I, I like this lock-in in the sense that You've just shown that you've got a lot of wave clear and two champions that used to be only late game, and well, Victor not so much, but now you've got a Caitlyn that if you max trap is fairly strong in the early uh, parts of the game. You can, you know, dominate team fights with that. You've got a Victor that's exceptionally strong in team fights as well. So I like that Humor have gone, okay, there's our damage component. We're going to bring the rest of it in a little bit later. Right, and and now I'm, I'm looking at Epsilon. Do they try to go a little bit all in on the, on the early game? They've got the Nidalee. And they may have that Zyra as well. Mm. You know, you gotta you gotta fight range with range if you can. I want to see if they take it. The Aurelia does get picked up though for Satorius, and they lock the Zyra. So no way to carry shown just yet, but you've got to expect it's going to be something along the lines of the Ezreal. The Sivir is also so available. Bit of a mismatch though for Epsilon on what they want to do. Um, the Zyra's more kind of zone control in team fights. Nidalee is a poke heavy champion. Irelia is dominant in the side lanes. Typically, if you want to go a strong side lane pick like in Irelia, you would then pick a, a good four pack, uh, which is still fine with a Nidalee, don't get me wrong, but she doesn't have the same kind of benefits that you know, like a tank jungler would have in that scenario, like a Rek'Sai, which can act as a frontline for your damage. So I, I want to see what the two missing parts are from Epsilon, what they bring from the mid lane and the AD carry. If they do bring a Sive plus a mid laner that can hold their own, um, yeah. there is still a potential for that. It's looking to be a very squishy team, but you know, if they can get the snowball off, let's say they go standard lanes and, and then Nidalee pretty much camps up in the top side too. It could be a very hard time for Huma if they allow the Aurelia to kind of get out of control here, but we'll see what happens as the uh, Karma is locked in, and so is the Elise. So... Or Paler, interesting. I mean, Caitlyn Karma theoretically shouldn't die in lane. We'll Ever. take a lot of damage. Um, yeah, if but they've they... got speed boosts as well. They've got right. shields, they can survive. If they tread into Zyra's territory, which onto a Caitlyn is not always the uh, easiest thing to, to land when it comes to the, the roots. So still waiting on the top lane pickup from Huma. They were hovering over the poppy to try and look at the Aurelia, but I like what Huma have done here when it comes to giving themselves options because you've got a Victor that can aid a little bit in disengage with the gravity field. You've got a Karma that can do the same. So if that Aurelia tries to come into a fight, you can kind of get yourself away from them. 
So waiting on the AD carry, possibly going to be the Ash, but of course we have other options too. Siv or Ezreal, all available. If they want to get a little bit more range in here. Let's see if the timer ticks down what they're going to lock in. Woolite does okay. opt for the Ash skin, and we've got a Varus on mid for Kazuki. And, uh, well, so I believe he played it last week. Well, now it makes a little more sense because you're running yeah. more of a poke style. You've got some disengage from the Zyra, the Ash, and it also gives you good engage potential on top of that. So now with that being, you know, n not particularly uh, control mage focused in the mid lane, more poke, you've got a Nidalee, a Varus to deal high amounts of damage. And essentially Epsilon is saying, as long as we can stay away from fights, we should actually be okay. We can set them up on our own when we want to fight, but as long as they can never get on us, yep. we uh, should be fine with things. If we see a Maokai or something come out here, they basically concede the laning phase from Huma, but say, we're just going to team fight you all the time. And the way they team fight too, it's obviously very tricky when you're looking mm. at a poke comp like this, but they have so many tools to lock down individuals. Uh, they have multi-CC as well. The Chains of Corruption will be very, very crucial in this game as the Poppy is locked in for JWoww. So that top lane, it'll be a bit of a bruise fest. Mm-hmm. Irelia will take control of that the later the game goes, but still, we're going to see JWoww come in on the flanks, have some damage. Um, and honestly, it, it's a tough one for Epsilon if they can't actually stay away from the fights from Huma. Luckily for them, they do obviously also have the Varus as well to disengage. But I mean, if Huma can get the Victor in and deal damage, there's pretty much no tank on the Epsilon lineup. Uh, no, that's only very really true. the Aurelia is going to be heading that way. And, you know, it puts a lot of eggs in one basket. But yeah. Epsilon, they have a lot to really try and worry about this game because if they, they do need to really snowball ahead, or rather they do need to be able to try and fight a little bit more directly and, and force their way away from being jumped on. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of tools that are on the side of Huma that can enable that. Yeah, it's so many tools. Uh I'm I'm still looking though at this bot lane. If we end up in standard lanes, I wonder. We've not seen enough of the the Zyra matchups yet. We've only really had uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, here in Europe, we've only had one week. North America had it back on six ten, but uh, I, I want to see how that matchup goes. The Karma into yeah. the well, Zyra. Well, we I mean we're getting ahead of ourselves when we even get to yeah. standard lanes as well. But That's I kind true. of expect that in all honesty. But of course, as a reminder, if you guys see any of those massive plays that you just can't help but call out, go ahead and hit us up on Twitter, hashtag CSBigPlays. And I actually expect quite a few of those with the way Epsilon have kind of rolled their comp this time around. It's just yep. can they execute it? That's I mean, the question. Can they do it? We had one uh, big play. It wasn't quite a hashtag CS big play, but it did make it onto hashtag the Penta last week from Challenger, which was uh, also a valid hashtag. Yeah, the uh, the Speaking Caitlin of hashtags, play. One, yeah. hashtag EPS win. <laughs> or if you think Uma could close this one out, HMA win. They've definitely got a much more straightforward composition, but I applaud Epsilon for going all out with this. I cannot wait to see if they can make it happen as we load up onto the rift. On the blue side this time, Epsilon Esports. Huma on the red. Game number two of this best of two, and Huma leading it right now, 1-0. Yeah, 1-0 after a good, good start from Huma. Um, and a bad start from Epsilon, really, when you look at it. Uh, we, uh, last game, saw them run directly into bottom lane and give away a kill from their jungler. Yes, from Epsilon, uh, after so. chasing way deep for that one. I don't think they'll make the same mistake twice when they've got an Ash Zyra. No, I you don't think hope. so. Uh, Zyra, the old queen of level ones, because, <laughs> because you can just uh, root a lot of people. It's like her and Annie. Mm -hmm. It's like Flash W. Well, and Paler, he's glad he's got the spider links to help him out here. Uh, Kedril, got to be careful. He walks straight into the Hail of Arrows. The whole goal of this start, though, was to get that ward up into the Krug, see if you can spot where Impaler is starting. And Impaler's actually going to go up there. There's the damage, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, that Zyra does in that scenario. Now that she has random spawns of plants and you don't have to pop the seeds yourself, you can actually just kind of run around and every so often you spawn one. Crystal realizes he might need a bigger gun. He's going to go back to base, heal himself up just a little bit, grab another biscuit. And we will get off to a start of a standard lanes. Jungle buddy system to start things off up in the top side. So everything is very, very standard. But Epsilon have a momentary advantage here. Yeah, because Kristen is going to be late to this lane. So now he has to try and deal with a Zyra Ash lane that is going to be level two before them. You can see Woolite now recognizing that Kristen is there. Yeah, isn't there, steps forward and uh, takes control of the laning phase, gets the first two CS. You can see they're just trying to deny the first 
minion or two. I believe they've actually denied Krizlin two now. Wendelbo did get the experience from that. It's a lot of irritating poke. And Krizlin, you know, you can see him trying to answer back, but he misses the Peacemaker this time. Noxiac just keeps stepping forward and, and landing the plants, just constantly, constantly harassing, even at level one. Yeah, it's kind of disgusting, if I'm being honest. Um, there were a lot of tweets that came out from Vanda last week after H2K played a whole bunch of Zyra that was like, oh my god, the damage. I can't believe how much damage she does. Uh, in one of the games, uh, Vanda actually had the third highest damage out of anybody in that game. That's a support, Including yeah. mid laners and AD carries and carry top laners. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just don't expect it because we haven't seen... We've seen we've had Pokey supports for a while, always, always in the meta in one form or another, but... Mm -hmm. Not ones that really do as much as Zyra can. Not to mention the utility she can offer in these team fights. You know, once you hit six, that ultimate knockup is such a wide area as well. I mean, this is a team now that has so many lockdown tools, and if they can get the jump on someone, snap the trap shut, pounce, easy peasy. Yeah, and that's what I want to see from Epsilon is that they hit the six and go for it because. Honestly, they were a little reserved with the Ash in the last game. They, yeah, they, after being punished. Yeah, they were punished, which I think is fair, because you look at it and you say, okay, well, you don't want to get over-punished too hard, but at the same time, if you're running a comp that that is the strength and you're too afraid to actually utilize the strengths, then probably not exactly the right comp to be running. Maybe you should uh, think of a slightly different way of playing if you're uh, not wanting to engage with an Ash. Yeah. Uh, for Huma's side, Impaler, See if he can have an early impact in the lanes. He's so far just been roving around, but he'll run smack dab into the bottom jungle where there's really nothing to get at the moment unless he can grab a gank off. Woolite and Noxiac are a bit far forward, but want. Impaler is spotted on the ward. No change in behavior <laughs> for the Epsilon bot lane, but they know what's up. It's almost as if he knows the ward's there. He's like touching it with his nose. <laughs> He's like standing right on top of it. But uh, no, obviously he doesn't know the ward's there, otherwise he wouldn't be standing there. Uh, so he's gonna have to back away. E even look at that, will I? Okay, that's actually mind games right there. Utilizes the hawk shot. They even managed to zone him away. Really nice. Big plan explosion there, and Woolite just narrowly was able to dodge. Obviously saw it coming, but able to dodge the cocoon up. This does give a little bit more breathing room to Chrysalin and Wendelbo. Yeah. But when you're a Caitlyn Carmelane and you need help to zone people off, that's not a good start. No, that's not a good sign either. But I, I like what Willite did there, utilizing the Hawk shot, because it made them kind of believe they didn't know where the jungler was, completely baiting. Uh, top lane, JWoww. Kyrie. <laughs> Kyrie and uh, uh, Satorius. Okay. Not really on the same page. But just a couple of auto attacks, and JWoww just turns right around again. He's not having any trouble. Impaler's coming in for round Second two, time. however. Let's see who they focus. It's Noxiac that gets stunned, locked, very low on the health. Oof. And there's a teleport coming in. Will it be too late? Flash away from the jungler and support. Wendelbow and Impaler taking way too many shots from the tower. Chrysalis hanging around here, but he doesn't have enough power to put any of them away either. It was really nice damage, though, that came out from Huma in that scenario. They were really able to punish Epsilon for being in position. Then you can see Chrysalis wants to continue teleport to push out. Yeah, force the teleport out. Uh, I believe Satorius actually ended up canceling it and uh, has Arch remained shot. in the top side. That's a good way to anti-gank. Impaler's uh, already on on the retreat path. Wendelbo very low in this one. Wolite though steps Ooh. on the trap. A lot of damage at the maximum range. Headshot. Chrysalin is going to have to face down a couple of plants though, so he can't go any further forward. And this is uh, this trap max on Caitlyn. We're only at level four right now, but it is already the second point in it, which allows you to kind of push forward and create a, a defensive line. Here comes Kyrie though from yeah, the they jungle. Don't see him. Oh, Wendelbo so low. He stops his back. In comes oh, the spear. It didn't hit. Not going to connect, so they're safe for now, but a lot of jungle lip service being paid down bottom side. Noxiac didn't hit with the, the strangle, the, the the roots there. If, yeah. oh, strangle if thorns. just you caught got it. with that. Wait, no, I'm sorry, deadly spines. Strangle uh, thorns the old. There's a lot uh, yeah. of plant uh, motifs here. Uh, grasping roots is oh, what that, I was going that for. One. Well, yeah. that's the other one. I was going to say strangle roots, but that, that would be uh, wrong. Um. <laughs> so one thing I've learned about dealing with Zyra is much like real life, gardening is not a lot of fun. You don't have green fingers? No. Okay. Not at all. And uh, that's all I'll say about that one. Let's talk about the mid lane a little bit because it's been a very quiet affair. Just like last game, even though it was all about the sides uh, moving back and forth, it's obviously meant that the mid laners have been kind of left alone. Kazuki does take a little bit of poke, and he's actually down about 10 CS versus Kajal, but the, the even the early game, Victor Waveclear is still a little bit ridiculous. 
Ah oh, man, this this is the 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 moment where as a Caitlyn, you shed a tear <laughs> because uh, as as Crepo was talking about on LCS, this is the 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 build that you go on on Caitlyn when it's like ah I couldn't mm -hmm. quite afford yeah. afford the prime rib. You can't prime. get you can't get your BF sword, yeah. so you have to settle for pickaxe, and then you're like. Oh, if only I had the 20 extra AD. <laughs> I could kill more things. It's more that it, it's just like a, yeah. a frustrating curve out on the build now is you've got to wait for the BF sword later. Um, mm -hmm. Where, you know, you don't have the same amount of time to sit back in the lane. You don't quite have the same amount of damage to harass. Doesn't make your headshots quite as effective. Yeah, feels bad. It's frustrating. Oh, feels bad. Like, oh. like, what are you Why does he keep on? stepping on these traps with the grasping roots? Do come in onto Crystal, so they return some damage. Woolite, so, Woolite. I know what they're doing in that scenario. Is Woolite saying, "Okay, well, I'll bait him forward by stepping on the trap. You just root him in place." But Noxiac isn't quite at the same time. Oh! Flash forward. Okay, Woolite. He was able to avoid some of that damage. He does not have his heal or his flash. This is a dangerous move right now for him to even stay around in lane. Karma's letting fly bombs here too. He's got to go. Yeah, he, he has to back away. Woolite has to back. So Krizlin with a really, uh, you know, a lot of people look at that and say. Wait, why? Why would you do that? What? What's? What is that play meant to be? If he hits the net, the auto kills like straight away. So Krizlin was looking for it. He just kind of mis-executed that play. He just did not land the net in the right place. So uh, it is still a, a whiffed play from Krizlin, but he's trying to put the pressure down onto Woolite and isn't content with just kind of like winning a laning phase. He wants to crush this laning phase from here. Impaler is topside. Waiting for Satorius here. Face checks in. Patient Spider in the brush, sinking in the fangs, and JWoww charges, but only knocks Satorius closer to the turret. He does get the stun off. There are a lot of tower shots flying, but that's going to be first blood up in the top lane. Oh, bottom side. There's, There's the, the arrow. arrow. Chrysalin, he nets right into Kire. They have the damage to take him out. The cat with the claws. And they answer down on bottom side. And at that point, Krizlin didn't have his flash av available. For trying to be flashy in the bottom lane, trying to get the kill onto Woolite, he gets punished as soon as they hit level 6 for Epsilon. And that is the high-risk, high-reward nature of making a play like that, is he did not get any reward for it and gets punished heavily by Kyrie coming back to the bottom side very quickly after that flash was down. So Huma, with one good play on the top side, one bad play on the, bad side, on the bot side, which which uh, turns things around. Still a fairly even game, though, between these two. Yep, gold's just about even with uh, the return gains on each of those plays. Still, the bottom lane for Epsilon, looking a little bit better for them at the moment. And they've definitely had some help from Kirei to kind of push back this Crystal and Wendell Bow combo. Still yeah. worries about Willite's positioning and decision-making in those lanes, but he hasn't been punished for it just yet. Kirei throws a spear, but it's dodged out by Wendell Bow, who was on a bit of a roam. Koskyu, meanwhile, he's still fairly behind Kajol, but at least he's getting some free time as Kajol did back off into base, and, and we'll probably see the return after this wave, and it is, in fact, going to be the case. And Paler heading up again towards top. Satorius, no flash. a little more cautious this, this time, time, but no flash. So if Impaler comes in, he's trying to just wait for those minions to uh, bypass so that Satorius is dragged further forward. Here he's coming. The Q use. And Satorius, a little extra damage here. Spear flies, they know the Nidalee's there. And they turn their attention, but they can't get enough damage. Buckler damage does come out. Impaler, though, is very low, and he's out of mana. Yeah, he's out of mana, has to back away. Bottom lane Ashero, again. And in comes the Syra. Strangle Thorns, knocks Yak with the kill. Ace in the hole on, forcing the flash away. And a teleport quickly cancelled from JWoww. You gotta keep in mind that this Ash Arrow is only on like a 90 second cooldown this early on in the game, so it's going to be up often. And that's where Ash Zyra is just so deadly in this scenario, is they just go aggressive. And when they want to, they'll just kill you in the lane. That time Zyra picks up the kill, so maybe not the best. I uh, mean, when you're doing that much damage result, as a support, you kind of yeah. earned it. I guess it's also fine if you are actually a damage threat. It's, yeah. it's not I mean, the end flat, of the world. Flash. Strangle Thorns Ignite, yeah. and you kind of done. He used a lot, I, yeah. I guess. He earned that kill. Come on, stress. <laughs> uh, another assist in Woolite's pocket, though. And, uh, you know, it turns a little bit better for EPS right now. Epsilon, they, um, you know, we, we talked about last week how they didn't have a terrible start. This is obviously a much better start for them than what we saw in the previous game. They're rocking a gold lead now. Kire is going to be put on a leash for just a second. And he does take the inner flame. Chrysalind is going to be able to net away and does avoid the spear. 
Still no flash on Krizlin, so he has to be careful in any of those scenarios. Uh, Ash Arrow is coming back up in 15 seconds, which means Krizlin's going to get hit by that if, uh, if he sticks around in the bottom side. Zyra, however, is backing away. Noxiak lost a lot of health in that, so uh, they're just going to hang on to the Ash Arrow for yeah. now. JWoww just JWoww keeps top. on uh, trading. I don't know if he's going to win this one, no. though. Satorius! Oh! JWoww says no. JWoww says no for now. Satorius did have those, the Transcendent Blades around. I was going to say JWoww's ult up is enough for JWoww to uh, disengage that for now. And look at what it opens up bottom side. Mountain Drake attempt from Huma. So despite... There's a teleport for Satorius, oh, though. Oh, Ash Arrow is still up, but... Wait just a minute. They Satorius. peeled off that. There goes the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. They find Chrysalid, but they're trapped. And the Ooh. chains are on! Chrysalid is gone! Woolite gets the kill on that. And Satorius can't do a damn thing to keep on chasing. And Huma didn't even get the dragon in that scenario. It took too long to take the mountain dragon. And you can see Epsilon are punishing Huma very effectively with all of this crowd control. We talked about, you know, this composition being a little bit brittle if they end up fighting a lot in, you know, even numbers. But when they're landing all of this crowd control, the Ash Arrow, the, the Varus Chains, everything like that is going to allow them to end these fights before Huma can ever get them started. And that was just the perfect comboing up. You could see Chrysalin's health bar just being melted through Satoria, still trying to chase. I mean, him saving the teleport for just the, such an occasion, it allowed them to really open this up. Now they've got Mountain Drake, extra damage. Let's take a look at how they really started this one. Because <laughs> Chrysalin just like, he's Again. in the back, he thought he's safe, and then all of a sudden, Where's the health bar? And Krizlin had just flashed uh, by the looks of it. No, in fact, that's a spectator issue on Krizlin's flash. You can see it cooling down very quickly. But as we're back to live, you can see it is available. Yeah. So I thought for a second it had, it had uh, he'd just flashed away and got hit by the arrow. That would have been really depressing. Yeah. Um, but for Grizzlin, something that is a little frustrating for himself is he finally got the money for that BF sword, but now he's on BF pickaxe and parts of the hurricane. At this point, you just got to finish the eye edge, man. I mean, just go for it. The other side of it is that realistically, the eye edge is not going to help you either way. Either you get caught or you're on the defensive. You're waiting for that second item to be eye edge. You realistically have more use out of a hurricane to be able to clear waves and play on a defensive standpoint and make sure that Ash and the Zyra can never really catch you. But at the same time, that's difficult enough because uh, you can't put enough distance between you without being able to zone off the entire wave with five uh, mm -hmm. Traps, which we're not quite at that point. We're at four traps now. We need another yeah. level Still before Krizen can do that big big win for Epsilon because they they get the extra kills They get uh, a kill especially on a wool and then mountain dragon so they can start punishing They do have solid poke and being able to do bonus true damage to towers Huma now are gonna have to play a little bit more on the back foot. It's still only 15 minutes in that you know It's not a hugely significant gold lead, but Epsilon have shown they can punish. Yeah, they can punish. We've got to keep our eyes on bottom lane again, though, uh, soon at least, because that Ash Arrow is up and available. We can see, look at what Krizlin's doing, is he's trying to just box off half the lane. Yeah. So they can say, okay, well, the arrow can only come from this area. like, <laughs> Or at least them being reasonably able to do anything. Exactly. We, we at least have this small window where the Ash Arrow cannot come through. But now you can see he actually releases the, uh, the cage. Uh, Krizlin has Impaler here with him. So if they were an engage, it would be huh? pretty detrimental. Okay, they land a couple of Ooh. two. Oh, oh Noxiac! <laughs> it chopped the oh, it chopped yeah. the head right off the rose there. This is really messy. Like I'm just gonna be honest. Like Epsilon has st throughout the last ten minutes have stepped on way too many traps. Spears to kill them and traps and no strangle reason. thorns. I mean, somebody has really, really got to clean up in this bottom lane because it is looking very, very messy. Kirei's caught. They do keep sinking the damage in. Impaler is going to go up and go down. Does he have the damage to finish off Kirei and Nidalee heal? Meanwhile, flashes around the side. Woolite is actually going to pick up one onto Chrysalis. Sends a volley flying, but now he's caught between a spider and traps. Back to the safety of his base, but Q is here. He took the long run, got the chains on. Impaler's shut down. Oh, messy, messy fight. Woolite manages to Mission Impossible his way through the traps right at the end after flashing forward, but Krizlin somehow survived through that entire fight because Wendelbo was the uh, the tastier target. All around the map, though, it's Huma. Despite this bottom lane going so badly for them, 
Epsilon have lost control of top and mid and are now losing their towers here as well. So it's been a good start for the top side of the map for Huma. Bottom side for Epsilon is the one that's winning. Yeah, chase the kills. <laughs> Epsilon down in the bottom side as it all happened. Will I taking the ace in the hole here and then the spear flying makes him think twice. But yeah, free time on top and mid as a result. So Kyrie is the one that gets locked down initially from this. And you can see Traps making a very treacherous path under the tower. Cocoon was the one that did it, but the combo of just Cocoon into extra damage that follows up. You can see Impaler manages to finally take him out. Warlight, at this point with the Mission Impossible, wants to go forward to try and take out uh, Chris. Yeah. Sees uh, somebody there with Impaler and just manages to weave his way through, but Koski was around to pick off the last one. So, I mean, Epsilon's bot lane, I mean, theoretically is enough to carry them through this. The Ash, the Zyra is enough between them, but look at the rest of the map now. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Poppy is slightly ahead. The mid lane is significantly further ahead for Cadrill. Um Apart from that kill that was just picked up by Cos Q. So again, it depends on how Epsilon play this out. If they can get the poke working for themselves and then allow the Aurelia to split push, it could still work out in their favor. This has definitely been a oh, game TP that is a lot top. more action here. Teleport he around the backside. JWoww. They've caught Kire, Noxiak, and Woolite. What can they do? Ash Arrow flies into JWoww, but he charges right into Woolite. Stranglethorns are up onto Wendell, though. Another teleport comes around the side. Satorius is just knocked out of there as soon as he finishes the channel. And Kadrill, the Chaos Storm, is huge! A triple kill for the victor! Huma come up huge. Massive play from Huma. They trade it for Koskyu sticking around in the middle lane, but that... Chaos Storm was huge from Cadrill. Managed to take out three people. It was actually looking dire for Huma in the top side. Satorius is going to take out Wendell, but he's got two. That's Aurelia for you right there. And dodges out of the cocoon, so Impaler can't follow it up. I don't think Impaler would have wanted to follow it up either. He would have pretty yeah. much met his demise going over the, the wall. So what was a great play for Huma just turns around in Epsilon's favor, taking the turret and the kill. So this was the start. Epsilon were boxed in and really didn't have enough to, to take this fight without. Look, the Zyra ult now zones away Wendelbow and Impaler, who are already now dropped fairly low. Good Poppy ultimate keeps them uh, alive for a little bit longer from JWoww, but in comes Cadrill to clean this fight up, and Sertorius bluffs his way out because nobody has vision on where he goes. He just sits in the bush, and suddenly Wendelbow that's a support karma. Not going to do much in that scenario. And that's a Caitlyn. Wow. That no flash, no heal, no life. Mountain Dragon now started for Epsilon. It has been a very messy game. Back and forth kills as we approach the 20 minute mark, seven to six. Now the Dragon falls in the pocket of Epsilon. They'll have a little bit more burn available in 20 seconds until the Baron will spawn on up. But Huma have been showing that they are no slouches this game. Hawkshot goes flying. See if there was any last minute Rift Herald shenanigans. And I mean, this is a scenario where you've got a poke composition that wants to kind of siege up a little bit later. They've got two Mountain Drakes, 20% additional now. It's uh, pretty, pretty tough to deal with that when you look at uh, the extra damage to towers as true damage. It means if they touch a tower, they're really going to hammer it home quickly. Well, and it also makes it even easier to A secure more dragons and then mm -hmm. when the Baron becomes an option, it just gives them more options, more availability to get these things. The gold has stayed relatively close, but that's the intangible benefit. Those dragons really enable you to do that. The thing is, we've seen them still be very, very squishy, as this composition kind of proved. But if they're not taking those skill shots, they haven't had too much of a problem. And in all honesty, Epsilon have drastically improved game to game in, in their ability to just not tank up too many shots. Yeah, that's fair. They've, uh, they've it's an important quantity in a league player. Now, you can see Huma, though, want the bottom side tower. They want to take that bot outer and go aggressive here. Ooh, they Noxiac. Got Noxiac. He's got a lot of plants in the area, but it's not going to be enough, or is it? A lot of heals come out. He stays alive. Enchanted Crystal Arrow lands on Impaler in the back. And the Ooh. gauntlet of plants, they just run right through it. Wendell Bow taking a heaping helping of damage. Headshot crit onto Kire. That tower is all but dead here. And we'll go back to the top side where we'll see JWoww crashing right into Satorius again. Yes, crashing right into him, but neither that one of them was a wants bit the more fight. anticlimactic, yeah. Impaler, I think, just got tagged by uh, an arrow or something in the bottom lane that made his uh, health warning ping flash up. So, still not over as Cos is down there. <laughs> Huber have got to play this out fairly carefully. Yeah. There's uh, a lot of damage on the side of Epsilon that they cannot afford to uh, really go aggressive into.
Uh, Huma, they, they just have no fear with pulling the trigger. The problem is they run straight into way too much damage trying to commit. Nearly Whoa. getting Noxiac, but it forced the Summoner heal out of Woolite. So they got a little bit back for that one. Now JWoww is going to run smack dab into Satorius again, and Woolite is there. Got him. The hammer goes up, and he knocks him back yet again. <laughs> JWoww gets himself out. I'm chuckling because uh, if a damage support wasn't strong enough just off her base damages for Zyra as it is, uh, that's oh. a haunting, guys. Oy. And Stalk Boots. <laughs> that's on this Zyra. That, and as you said, the gauntlet of plants, uh, they were actually enraged plants as well because of that strangle thorns. So, uh, whew, I mean. I don't like enraged plants. I don't even like normal plants. The day of the Triffids taken over. Yeah, seriously. Ooh, man. Yeah, that's I know, right? That takes me back. You weren't expecting that I one. Literally, I literally it doesn't wasn't look alive. Like Impaler's expecting this one in the top well, side. I don't think so. Well, I does get caught. He's going to have to burn his own flash, and they immediately turn their attention, but the rest of Epsilon are here. Impaler trying to finish the kill. He does get it, but he gives his life. And now the rest of Epsilon were on the chase, but it's going to just be a one-for-one. Cadrill one. this time not quite there in time, and uh, Satorius did not choose to teleport up to the top side. It was a one-for-one one trade overall. Well, it was the one that fell for Epsilon. So Impaler thought they had the advantage there, but there were just a few too many Epsilon members around. Did manage to convert it into the kill, though. And honestly, when you look at this game, um, a big difference for Cadrol this time as to what CosQ was doing in the last game. We'll touch on that uh, when we get back to the live game. But this is Impaler going aggressive. They uh, kind of knew that Kyrie and Woolite were there. Did not have the best of reads, uh, and it wasn't the best of Crystalline Arrows. You can see it's still flying down the map. <laughs> as uh, Impaler and Willite ended up trading their life here. But that was pretty much the end of this fight. But yeah, uh, no perfect hex call rush for Cadrill. He's gone for the more damage approach, which is the, hey, I'm just going to get my ult the first tick on people and probably the second one, and after that I don't really care, and go damage and defense at this point. Get the Sonyas, get yourself the Morellos, and then later you'll get perfect. Take Kyrie. your time about it. This game has Sneaky. definitely had a lot of action. Kyrie waiting, lands the point blank spear out of Wendelbo, but he's 1v3, and that tower is not even there. It's so negligible. Impaler keeps chasing off, but he gets stunned up by Satorius, but they land even more on top of him, sinking the fangs in and take out the Aurelia. Uh, Kyrie thought that they were safe in that bottom lane to go aggressive. Problem was, Satorius took so much damage to start that that by the time Kyrie actually got himself in the fight, Kyrie was already walking his way back out through the lane did not want any of it. The tower will fall. I believe it'll be traded on the top side, but look at Kuma. They want to get out of that bottom lane and look for mid lane instead because it's a more valuable resource for them when they can get more vision control deeper into the enemy jungle here. Ash arrow hits on Skadrill, forces out the oh, cleanse. And a piercing arrow too. A lot of damage from two sides and Kuma rethinks their strat a little bit there. They got a lot of damage though on the inner. Eight to eight is the kill score. We're at 24 minutes in, and this action just keeps on happening. Really no gold lead for either team. It's bang on even. It's a very messy game at the same time, though. When you look at um, the overall kind of level, it's <laughs> pretty much, can we make a play? Oh, yes, let's what go. are you doing, Wendelbo? Getting caught by Noxiac. There's going to be a big Strangle Thorns up and a Chaos Storm to answer. All it does is clear the minions, though, and take a big, sizable chunk out of the rest of Epsilon's health bars, but... Wendelbo did not expect the level of damage that got right in his face. Yeah, and I mean, that kind of goes to what I was saying, is Wendelbo just kind of wasn't really anticipating damage coming from mid lane, just walks in and goes, hey guys, I'm here to clear a wave. Oh, there's four of you here. I'm dead. <laughs> from there, yes, Cadrill has a whole lot of damage. Utilized his flash, uh, was forced that there were a couple of other summoners used. Koski was forced to use his uh, ghost in his flash. Will I use his heal? Mountain Drake. Ooh. Uma has a chance now to Uma get a little bit of burn one, for them. Though. They have to take this one away. It's half of oh. Epsilon. Satorius, they're coming in around the side. Oh. See if they can contest this. Oh, oh the spear. Oh. Comes a smidgen too late. That's going to be smited by Impaler. Two Mountain Drakes to one this time. And Huma have got one in their back pocket, so they can breathe a sigh of relief here, but this has been just so back and forth, and neither team hesitating to pull the trigger. Yeah, nobody really hesitating, or I, I don't want to say not thinking, because the, the thought process is very much so, is somebody caught out, let's go, aggressive, go, don't even care. This is the Epsilon composition, though. I mean, and not that they should dive in heedless, but if they can get a catch, that's yeah. where they can deal a huge chunk of damage to one or two isolated targets. 
And I mean, Kuma have been giving them a lot of opportunities, or at least things that have looked like those opportunities. And that was what, one of my pieces of criticism coming out of game one, was that Epsilon could have maybe had these opportunities with the Ash. They just didn't take them in the last game and allowed Huma to run away with it. But this time, they've been a lot more liberal with the uh, Crystalline Arrow usage. <laughs> Let's fire that out and see if it hits anybody. Yeah. Um, which, you know, with the combo of how much crowd control they have actually is working fairly well for themselves. So much so that Chrysalin has gone, I need a QSS, second item. <laughs> uh, well, third item, pretty much before he's finished his level two boots. So, uh, Chrysalin is not exactly having the safest of games when you look at it. He's been no. picked off a whole lot, hasn't really been able to convert much into kills. Uh, in fact, no kills, just the five assists. And where have they gone, right? It's all been cleanup thanks to a Halo. Or, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he has, been, he has been grabbing a lot of them for himself too, but you can tell the chaotic nature of the game when the, when the kill distribution is so wonky. Yeah, and uh, five kills on a, an Elise, not always the best of positions to be in. Um, I mean, Impaler likes to, to try and carry games a whole lot, but... Oh, Kendall's got good. three, though. I mean, so at least that split, that's definitely yep. going to help. And Wendelbo actually flashes forward to put the leash onto Koskyu. They get the ace in the hole, and JWoww around the side knocks him into the wall. Chrislin will finally get a kill of his own. <laughs> Stranglethorns comes up, and nobody's taken by it because the hammer denied the remaining engage from Epsilon. That actually <laughs> is not going to be a Baron attempt. That would be silly. Yeah, well, I mean, like, it, it's possible for them. The Ash Arrow is not a, it is available, though, so that is actually the thing. Uh, Hawkshot Why will take spot it when that you can out. bait it. Uh, you can't really bait it too no, effectively against Ash, unfortunately. Uh, Koski did have a fairly significant death timer uh, since we are 28 minutes into this game. Uh, so here come Huma. Okay, Karma Shield oh. speed boost. Huma try to go for the charge, but they only succeed in running right into the minion wave, clearing that away. The rest of Epsilon have backed off for just a moment. Is this the time? Do they start the Baron to try and force a fight? Yeah, Five a seconds on Cause Q. Ten seconds on Hawk Shot, so there is a, an opening That's here going where quick. Epsilon... Oh, they're going to use the arrow. Crystal arrow, it's going to connect on a JWoww. Do they have enough damage? Kyra is around the back to try and steal, or do they even need it? Look at that damage they can put out. Volley keeps flying. The Baron keeps Huma chunking. To run. They have a lot. Huma cannot do anything. Kyra around the side, Ooh. throws the spear. Do they have enough? No, they don't. Kadrel is going to have to cleanse his way to safety. Blinking health bars all around, and they back off. But it's enough. It's enough from Epsilon to deter this. Although, are they really going to start this? this Do they is have a, the damage? I mean, They've got they, two Mountain Drakes. Yeah, they have actually. Yeah, two Mountain Drakes. Plus now the damage is coming from the rest of the lineup. But there's a teleport. TP. Turn on to JWoww. They've got enough damage to take him down. Chains of Corruption land. JWoww might be huge in terms of health, but not nearly enough. That is going to be a kill over to Satorius. It stops the Baron, however. And you can see, look at the health bars on Huma. They either didn't recall or had to kind of come from the fountain very, very quickly in that scenario that you can see JWoww TP'd in. But Epsilon, they get stalled away from the Baron, but a very, very messy setup from both teams, just kind of committing and saying, hey, I think we can do this. Let's try and rush it down. This game's just been all about the action and a lot of damage from both sides. You know, we talked about uh, Noxiac, Syra. He's had the Leandri's Torment finished for a while, but only <laughs> if they can really land the big combo. And a lot of it's been contingent on JWoww just smacking the hammer. It is just so close to call either way, though. This game has been absolutely nuts. Yeah, it's, it's been uh, a little bit bonkers when you look at uh, a damage source coming from every position from Epsilon. Mm -hmm. Normally, and you most positions that. from Huma. Uh, yeah, and most positions from Huma as well. I mean, you can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Kama oh, still and, has and Paler, We talked about him maybe going a more tanky route, but he's actually gone pretty heavily <laughs> into the damage department for yeah. now. Uh, Riley's uh, obviously giving you a bit of both, but you know, really only JWoww is, is, is the true tank in this game. And even he's got <laughs> damage because, of course, of the Frozen Fist. Yeah, because, of course, Poppy. Yes, <laughs> well, the other that one. too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, this is just such a crazy game when you look at how these two teams are playing it out. There's very little on the w in the way of kind of macro uh, no, they're just strategical heads, play. I mean, now we can see Satorius has gone bottom side because they recognize they have a, a teleport advantage because JRL used this DP to get into that fight. So now they can actually start spreading out across the map. And this is what Epsilon should be doing. They just have to ward their flanks and be careful because as long as Impaler can come in from the side and, and lock somebody down perhaps with the cocoon. The same for JWoww if he can come in through the side. There is still a potential that Huma can take a fight and run away with this one. We are still fairly close on the gold totals. Yeah, well, uh, the time being, Satorius is the one with the teleport advantage since JWoww used that and got himself caught. Next dragon will be 30 seconds away. It is Cloud. Yeah, so it is a little bit less valuable for the teams to take, and that would be the last 
prior to the Elder Drake, but Baron obviously has been the chosen objective for a little while now, and you know, it should continue to be that way. Half health Wendell Bow, they really don't want to back away now. Five man stack, but they have to be Ooh, careful not to run straight into Noxiac, Ooh. who has a lot of plants around the side. Well, there was a moment there where Woolite and Kyrie were top lane, and the rest of the team weren't around. Huma maybe had an opening. Huma's backing. It was a very short window at that point that uh, Huma couldn't quite collapse on, so not too surprised they didn't go for it, but... Impaler runs straight uh, uh -oh. into Kyrie, but the arrow does not go the right direction. It's a quick flash so, away. So what he was doing there was trying to check into Baron. If you repel up, you get the vision uh, of any targets that are, that are inside that. So he was like, okay, well, I'm just going to test the O oh, they're next to me. Uh. Yeah, you usually want to check that brush before you come right down into it, I would suppose. Kyrie's yeah. going to actually get locked up for a second, but he's got a lot of friends. Yeah, it's it's definitely been a lot of individual mistakes like that that have allowed these big team plays, but both teams are making an equal amount of them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, yes, both teams are making a fair amount of them. And I uh, love it, Stress. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes for a much faster-paced game, even though we haven't really had anything in the last minute. But we're going to have a lot now, because Huma are like, oh, we're going to do Baron again. Uh, for two seconds. For two seconds. But look, they can see Sartorius is pushing down to the bottom side, so yeah. all Epsilon have to do is stall them out. JWoww just still doesn't have teleport, but he's yeah. about to get it up in about you know, 15, 20 seconds away. But... He's sitting on base at the moment, just trying to come out and defend the waves. Epsilon have had the tempo in this game, even though it has shifted a lot. They've had it, you know, I'd say like, you know, 60% of the time, a little bit more in their favor. They've been pushing more towers and about to get another, but Satorius does get shoved away by JWoww. Yeah, Satorius doesn't want to take that fight, even though the tower is so low, because look at how the rest of the team were moving on the map. Satorius didn't have vision of the rest of Huma. Uh, this time it's Epsilon they're clearing out the pit. Can't clear out the crab vision, though. Unfortunately for them, there is a wave pushing towards them top side. It's going to allow Huma to swing back into the Baron pit and take control of that vision should they all show. But Huma, in fact, you're going to look for the bottom side of the map. Yeah, with so much focus on the on the Baron pits too. Both teams have kind of at times really been neglecting these side lanes. Mm -hmm. You've seen the big waves build up that just get absorbed and and chunked down by either team and. Huma have actually started this Cloud Dragon because everyone from Epsilon are back, so this is kind of free. A little bit of extra movement speed, as we saw last game, can go a long way, eventually. <laughs> when you have a Kama and a yeah. Sivir and three and Cloud Drakes. That's the last Elemental Drake, so it's just a mountain and a Cloud <laughs> for Huma and two mountains to, to Epsilon, so... Arguably, the Elder Drake is actually more, va or is more valuable for Epsilon here. Not more than Baron, though. Still should be focused on. I'm of course, we've got a few minutes before that really becomes reality anyways. Yeah, uh, still six minutes just under. So Huma look like they want to go. Yep, Koski, he ends up getting caught, and he's Ooh. nearly chunked down to zero. Impaler chasing on. They actually land the chains, and the arrow comes out, nails him in the face, and they take down the spider. It's a one for zero, but it was a close call for Koski. And you can see how difficult these fights become when the Stranglethorns come out, is Huma have to back away and respect the damage that comes from the rest of the Epsilon lineup. And you can see even here, just a poke over the wall is so tough for Huma to deal with. Huma's still trying to move forward because they knew Koski wasn't there. So much damage, so much CC. And yeah, the effective Ooh. 4v4 in the mid, it's really just been a poke battle here. Crystalline does manage to line up at least one headshot. But Noxiac is right there with the plants. It's Epsilon now trying to force on Baron. They've started it up, two Mountain Dragons, and they've got it down to half health right about now. Huma have to move quickly, and they run their way in. JWoww sends the hammer flying. They get two. Baron secured, however. Baron is secured. Oh, Spear is going to come out and not hit anything, so Huma have to back away. The, the fight pretty much is already over. They do not really want to fight against Epsilon at this point. Impaler wasn't quite there. So Epsilon come up big from that exchange. That was the most anticlimactic Baron dance. Yeah, I know, right? I mean, JWoww's poppy. <laughs> come on, man. Yeah, two, yeah, 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 five man, three. Oh, well. Epsilon, they've got a teleport to, to deal with here. That tower is getting shredded real quick, but Huma are not keen to let it go. Wendelbo's health bar is dropping, but not as fast as Noxiac. JWoww manages to slam one in. And he takes Noxiac all the way back to Fountain. Oh, Watch for, for none Sartorius. there. Satorius looking to go around the side here. 
The tower will finally fall on the bottom, and Epsilon, they're the ones leading the charge. It's only Crystal here to defend. Satorius has actually decided to just go mid. They knocked down top, they got the bot with Winions, so they got mid with Satorius. That's a three tower swing. Yeah, and I, that's a much better decision from Satorius than sticking around. I think a lot of players would look at how low the health bars were top lane and think, hey, I'm already or I can combo between that. But Satorius says, no, we've got two Mountain Dragons and now the Baron buff. We can just continue to push the towers. In a game that's been all about butting heads, they do make a very, very smart macro play there and, you know, double up the towers that they had previously. 36 minutes on the clock and, you know, you only look at the kills. It seems to tell the story of a pretty back and forth game, but right now Epsilon have the lead in a pretty comfortable position. 6,000 gold ahead, the Baron buff, well, still ticking. Yeah, finally they've opened up a significant lead though. Uh, it's been very close up until this point for uh, Huma and they have maintained only a small lead in Epsilon's favor, but now Epsilon have r managed to explode this game apart. Irani heading topside, no TP though. Um, means that if there's a fight engaged onto the rest of Epsilon, Satorius is not gonna be there to fight with them, and that is pretty much the only champion that can actually survive through a lot of damage on the lineup of Epsilon. Yeah, but Huma, they've got a lot of damage to contend with themselves, so they stack five members on this bottom side. As long as Epsilon don't get caught, they buy time for Satorius. But now JWoww has actually moved up to the top, so we'll have a good old-fashioned 4v4, and the split will now commence. And JWoww can't really hold Satorius when those minions push further up. Ooh. Steadfast. Does get the knock-in, doesn't really trade as much as he's able to give on back, but they lock up the victor. Ooh. Kadril, a lot of damage dealt to him. Spear, Crystalline just dodging away from it. They've cleared the wave for now, but look at how fast Epsilon can keep equalizing the minions. They can just keep poking on this tower. The two Mountain Drakes in their pocket, giving them so much damage to burn through them. JWoww now steadfast, can't hold the line on Satorius. It's starting to fall apart here for Huma in game two. Uh, at this point, Impaler's trying to flank around the side, but it's only Noxiac that's low here. Will I still... No, Will I does not have his ultimate available. JWoww keeping on trying to defend, but Satorius has managed to push him off. That's going to be tower number one in the top side. Free time on inhibitor now. The rest of Epsilon on the bottom still trying to peck away at it. And that'll be the first inhibitor for Epsilon, making great use of that Baron buff. Now the arrow is about to be back available as well. So Epsilon, they can actually continue this should they choose to bring the Aurelia across to the mid lane. You can see uh, Cairo went over there just to bestow the minions with that Baron buff for now. And Story Epsilon still are trying fighting. to just pu push in. They're just continuing to try and go aggressive. Poking away as best they can. They do manage to grab the tower. Another in the mid here. Now Kyre looking for that one. 39 minutes on the clock. It's going to be really hard for Huma to try and come back into this one. It's going to be pretty much impossible right now. Epsilon, they've run out of their Baron buff, so they can't continue to push right this second. But the, look at the damage that's just coming out time and time again from Epsilon. They will reset, pull themselves back away from the base and look to heal up, spend some of their gold and get back into this. But Epsilon have been looking much better in this game than in the previous one. And Huma just have been struggling to deal with this high damage composition. And this is a composition that Epsilon, the team that we saw last game, would not have been able to pull off. There's so much more coordination from them. And yes, they've made mistakes. Yes, it's been a bloodbath all over the place. But Epsilon have showed that, you know, in all honesty, if you play it out right, you don't need a tank. <laughs> oh, it's a dangerous, dangerous composition. It is, to try but it's worked. With that. But it's fun to watch with uh, Epsilon being able to make it work. You have to Who hand it to the team to, uh, to really pull something like that out. Being one game down, and in, crucially, not having found a victory here in the Challenger series. Obviously, it's only week two, so there's plenty of time, but they're looking well on their way now as we have passed the 40-minute mark. Noxiac tanking an ace in the hole is still very squishy, but <laughs> he's been able to ditch a lot better than he's taking, and Satorius is, is completely unopposed up top. What is Satorius doing? Is he going to try and end here as they try Crystal and fight mid? They're trying to prevent the backs here. So far, it's working. JWoww is actually on the run. The chains do not connect, but Impaler does take a little bit more damage than he bargained for. They turn their attention for the 4v4. Chaos Storm onto Noxiac, but in goes Kyrae, out goes Kyrae. They're just buying time as Satorius keeps clearing the waves and looking for the cutoff around the backside. The Aurelia flank looking for Kadril. No, it's Chrysalin. Does he have the damage? He's locked up inside of the gravity field. Transcendent Blades are not enough. Chrysalin still able to take him out. 
at this point, Huma are just barely holding on. I don't know why Sartorius tried to make that play. He got good damage down onto the Nexus Tower, but Epsilon were in a position that they actually could have just held on and continued pushing the inhibitors. They had top lane pushing in. All they had to do was push through mid. Here's the TP coming out from JWoww. Gets locked down, though, and the Huma maybe oh, had to think twice this about this. dragon this. is so low. JWoww sending the Didn't hammer flying. Anyone. Did not hit on anybody, though. The Crystal Arrow will, in fact, connect on to Impaler. JWoww dives to the back, but he doesn't get enough damage to polish anyone off. Dragon still in Kadrill. range. Kadrill around the side cannot get enough damage on the Death Laser, and Dragon is still aggroing back and forth. JWoww piercing arrow will find him, but he's got the shield. Impaler turning on. They really want to try and take this Dragon, put it away, and try and save their chances at a 2-0. and zero. It's so damn close. Secured up by Impaler, but they're going to pay the ultimate price. Two kills. JWoww Impaler taken out of the fight and it was nearly casual as well. Teleport oh, up TP. to the top. Satorius, he wants to end this game now. Satorius wants to backdoor this game because the recalls cannot come out from Huma fast enough, and that's going to be Epsilon. They've managed to hold Huma up. Look at how low the health bars are here. Satorius is going to look to end the game. They have to take the scenic route back to the fountain, but there's no more Nexus turrets remaining. It's all Nexus Crystalline being zoned away, and that's it. 42 minutes. Epsilon even the series. Ooh, wow. That was a much faster paced game out of Epsilon, choosing to fight more frequently than we saw in the first game, and actually getting better fights as well, I think is one of the key things that they actually found the picks they needed earlier on in the game. That game was explosive from both sides. It was mistakes left and right, but they were able to collapse on each other, and finally Epsilon just pulled ahead with a very difficult to pull off composition. I cannot believe they managed to snowball that the way they did. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you look at the damage that, that really they had in that scenario, and I mean, it's it's no no real wonder how the early fights went their way, but they just continued finding the right little openings here and there to be able to, to continue gaining their lead. Even though it was a fairly close game, like Huma could have come back at pretty much any point in that game with one good team mm -hmm. fight for themselves. Like Kadrell showed that up in the top lane, getting that triple kill. Yeah, but there were so many times when they just couldn't really uh, use the ultimates in the right order. They had to blow poppy ultis to try and save a few lives here mm -hmm. and there. They couldn't really separate people out. And at some point, the ridiculous amount of damage that Epsilon <laughs> pulled out was too much. They got one chain combo, one stranglethorns, yeah. and whoever they caught was just dead. Yeah, uh, whoever...